to Community Voices with Carlissa Thorne. And I have with me today, Anita Casalina. And we're going to be talking about a project that she's working on called Billions Rising. And this project is dedicated to teaching people about self-reliance. So welcome, Anita. Hi. Hi, Carly. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm really happy to be here. I'm always happy to have you because you're always working on such brilliant projects. Oh. So I'd love for you to talk to us about what was the inspiration behind Billions Rising? Well, I've been on this show once before with you, and I gave you the history of, of how that how we began initially, which was I met someone who was doing work in Africa that was unlike anything that I thought was being done. I still had an older model in my mind where people were receiving aid from from governments or from big organizations like UNICEF or some of those uh, big foundations and nonprofits. And what I found out from this man who had been living in 20 different countries in Africa is that there was a whole new thing, a whole new way that this was being approached. And he was helping people build their lives up from the ground so that uh, they could form collectives and they could learn to stand on their own feet. So Billions Rising began that way with uh, myself and Warren Whitlock at that time. I said to Warren, why don't we find out what else is being done like this and, and, and start documenting that. And Warren's always game for that kind of thing. And so we began in January of 2013 uh, to have a weekly radio show where we would bring guests on who were from anywhere in the world doing anything that was as you say you mentioned self-reliance that's really been the cornerstone of what we're looking for is what's being done to help these people come out of poverty and be self-reliant and another way a more common way that gets talked about um, in our society is to talk about sustainability so these are sustainable solutions to poverty so that you and I could go into a developing country where people are growing maybe one crop really malnourished not doing well show them what it takes to maybe get some other crops going rotate those crops form a collective uh, sell what they have as surplus feed their family get the kids in school but leave we don't we don't superimpose our cultural standards on them and we don't stay to be the bosses so to speak. The best organizations we've found are training people who are indigenous to those societies where the work is being done and and they become the leaders of all these projects and those of us in the developed world are hands off then. So it's been really a great thing. We wrote a book by compiling all of our radio interviews and um, and then that book did really well on Amazon and it became a bestseller in multiple categories which was very fun for us. So then we began looking at what was the next big thing? What did we want to do? Because it's always about telling stories of hope. You know, you and I both know, we've talked about this before, that there's so much negativity in the news that it's just so great to find sources of positive news, not made up stuff, but things that are really actually happening where people are doing well, where they are giving to each other, where where the, the world is becoming a better place increment by increment through the actions of people. Um, and so uh, we were so happy with how well the book did that we thought, well, we want to spread the message even further. So we have now started Billions Rising Out of Poverty, which is a television show. So it's Billions Rising TV. We have a new website that we're building called BillionsRising.TV. It's just being built right now. And this is going to be a weekly television show. Did I say radio? I hope I said television. I'm so used no, to No, you did say TV. And oh. I have to say, I was really excited when you did come out with the book. And I was really excited that you actually did make it to the top of that because there's so many books that do want to do something like that and they don't make it. So I was really thrilled that you managed to take all those interviews and compile them into the book and, and did manage to take it to the top of that. And I was really honored that I was included in that. So thank you so much. I was for just going to say how nice it was to have you as a contributor to the book. That your, your interview about the ripple effect and collaborative efforts on Earth, that's a really big thing big theme that we're finding more and more 
uh, around the world and what's working for people. And um, so before I even talk about the television show, one of the things I'd like to mention is something else I think you and I both know, which is that the silver lining of the economic downturn and the recession is that people change their way of thinking about how to get business done or how to move forward in their lives with, with initiatives and with projects and things they wanted to get done so that I can help you do something, you help me do something, and both of us move forward. And that wasn't the case before everybody found themselves sort of at a loss without that top-down model working. When the banks started saying no to people and the big foundations and funders said, I'm sorry, we're out of money, we can't do this now, everyone began to reach more horizontally is how I see it. They began to find ways to reach each other and, and trade and, and barter. A lot of bartering has come back, just like, as they say, the good old days. And crowdsourcing and crowdfunding are just amazing. And, and what's so great about that is that everybody gets to participate. I can put in $20. You can put in $20. Thousands of other people do. And a, and a project gets funded and, and is able to move forward. So that's been a hugely exciting uh, aspect of the change on Earth. So and that's what I meant by the ripple effect, and that's why I don't people I don't people think that they understand when I hear people say to me, "Well, I don't have enough money. It's just me. You know, what with me, I can't do this. I can't do that." And they don't get that if everybody put in that one dollar, that two dollars, like you said, that twenty dollars, we can make an impact. We can contribute to a product or a project that means something. Right. And so it's such a valuable thing. Like I said, you were able to take all those interviews from really amazing people from all around and put together a book that was really valuable that did go somewhere. And now look, we've taken a book, right, that was a product, and now you're taking that product and turning it into a weekly positive TV show. I know so many people that have attempted to go there. I can't tell you how many times I get people inbox me and say, well, would you be willing to produce a weekly positive TV show and, or a weekly positive radio show? Mm -hmm. And they want to take it into Hollywood. Do you know how many times Hollywood has attempted to do a weekly episode, I mean, a, a mainstream TV show? Right. And it never gets green-lighted because too many people are saying it's woo-woo or it'll never go anywhere, the public won't, because they, they need the edge. You know, news is only selling if it's dark, if it's bloodshed, if it's yeah. negative, if, yeah. if it's this and that. But you know what? That is not true. More and more people are wanting to hear positivity. I just interviewed someone yesterday that is the, the positive broadcaster. You know, and it's funny. Right. You know, it's more and more people are craving positive news. Right. Well, even Arianna Huffington herself says the most popular sections of Huffington Post are the good news and the impact sections. And they're just nothing but good news. And there's more and more publications coming out like that, too. Positive News, US.org is one. Uh, Daily Good. You know, those are great things to subscribe to. You wake up in the morning and your inbox has good news, as opposed to, you know, there was this terrible thing happened here and another one here. So. Um, thank you so much uh, for, for your good comments about our book. We've been very proud of that book. And it's not about us. It's about how many people kept coming forward. You know, the hardest thing about this book, and um, you'll understand this too, it was knowing when to stop, knowing when to say we can't include anybody else or we're going to miss our deadline. And, and my editor and I would go, oh, no, look, we just found this too. Oh, we got to put her in. You know, so that was... You know, that was the hardest thing when we said we have to have a hard deadline and that's going to be the end of that. So so we did, and then we realized, oh, there's so much more. So we keep blogging. The, the billionsrising.org has a very dynamic blog site. We're constantly sharing good news there. But that's what drew us to thinking in terms of television. My producer, Melissa Lamming, uh, who's here in San Francisco with me, uh, worked in television and is a producer. I used to be a video and television producer. And so we're both kind of coming back to our roots and saying, 
this is a medium that's going to take the message even further. And now, with the way that television is no longer just broadcast, but there's there's webcast, and now there's apps for all the mobile devices too. We're just really excited because we're doing a lot of work to get the, get it moving in those in those uh, markets as well. So. The basic structure of the show is going to be, as I say, it's weekly, but we'll have a weekly in-studio guest. So somebody's going to come and sit at the you know, news type of desk with me. I'll interview them, and we'll have a theme each week. So the, the in-studio guest comes and talks about what work they're doing and maybe shows some video or film of, of uh, some of the projects they're working on. And then the second half is really exciting because it's Skype, and it's all long distance. So our first show is about Ethiopia. We have a woman from Ethiopia who lives uh, in California. She builds schools for girls in Ethiopia. She goes back to Ethiopia with her own hands and her relatives and the friends in the neighborhood. Actually, puts these, you know, the the bricks and mortar together for schools for girls. She finds ways to convince the families to send their girls to school. She's just amazing. So she's going to be great. Um, and her name is Lily Yosef. She has a foundation called Tangible Hope. And then uh, we have a gentleman uh, on the Skype interview. He is also from Ethiopia. And he's going to be talking about how he helped start the commodities market in Ethiopia, which gives farmers a much fairer price for everything that they're growing there. So. That's really fun. We're going to have movie reviews each week and something else that we call a sustainability minute where somebody comes on. We, in fact, Melissa is going to be our um, on-air reporter. She's done a lot of on-air work and she's, she's going to just talk about for a minute what another nonprofit is doing and how what they're doing is creating sustainability. So it's very inclusive. We want to keep adding a lot to the show so it has, it has a variety, and keeps people's attention, and um, I think it's going to be really exciting. So Ooh, that's... we have a lot of guests to show you. Oh, goody! That's why we want to hear. interview so many nonprofits and so many people from all around. So it's like it'll be a lot of fun because I'll have so many people that I get to um, throw your way, and um, I'll have a lot of you know. It'll be a lot of fun. I'll have a lot of cross. <laughs> I have so many people. That like sounds just great. Play. That's wonderful. Oh, I would, I would love that. Yeah, so so we have, um, as I said, the websites being built, and what we're going to do, uh, the show gets broadcast locally in the Bay Area first through a local television station, and then um, after the week is up, they they own the content for a week. When that week is over, then uh, Billions Rising Foundation owns uh, the content, and then we can sell it. We can put it up on our new website, but we can also, like I say, we're 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 talking to a developer right now about an app to develop an app so that anyone in the world can download that app and watch the show on their phone or their tablet and we have lots of followers over um, in Africa or Asia in the developing world country South America because they know that we're always thinking of them and trying to find ways to help them so this is going to be an incredibly wonderful way for them to be able to download the app watch the show and it can either be live streamed or it'll be archived. So it's very cool. We're enjoying that that movement out into this much broader kind of new television market that there is. That is why I love technology. I mean, think about it. We're talking via Google Hangout. There's Skype, right. and more and more and more. I mean, it's funny. Some people don't like technology. They're afraid of technology, and of course, they're thinking everyone's listening to us and Big Brother and all these other things. And I look at it as First of all, be as transparent as you can be. What are you afraid of? What are you attempting to hide? To hide. Look at the more transparent we live, what are you afraid of? Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's just my personal view. I mean, I, I really don't care if anyone's okay. listening or not because I don't really have anything to hide. And to me, technology has been a wonderful way. A, I've gotten clients from all around the world. I do have clients from around the world. And I get to talk to people from around the world. I, t I have clients I talk to in Africa. I have clients I talk to in England. I have, you know, I've talked to people from all around, and it's only because of this technology. I mean, and guess what? I do better work this way. A phone call, I can't see my client's body language. I can't see their eyes. I can't see their face. I can't see if they're processing or not. You know, I right. had a client this morning, and we were having a really deep conversation, and I could see there was almost tears in her eyes, so I knew there was still a charge on something we are talking about. Now, if I was on the phone... Yes, I could hear the tonality in her voice a little bit. However, seeing her eyes, I could tell 
so much more that there was something there. Right. Now, obviously, occasionally she can't get to her computer or not or to her iPad. And sometimes we might have just the phone call. However, I so much more prefer having this face to face where I can actually see the body language where they might be squirming a little bit or fidgety or you know what I'm saying. I right. can see the body language, so I know if they're really processing what I'm saying, or if they're multitasking, if they're doing other things, if they're tuning out. So I think the technology of Skype or Google Hangouts or whatever people are using these days, and whether it be on their laptop, whether it be on their iPad, whether it be on their phone, is such a great way for people to bond. I mean, parents, they're far away. Grandparents, they're going to see their grandkids babies that are born that people can't get to right away. I mean, this is such a way to be able to bond with people in ways that people didn't have the ability to do, where they have, can't travel thousands thousands of miles at a particular time, or don't have the money to travel right then and there at a particular time. So I totally agree with you. Agree with you. No, I absolutely agree with you. Billions Rising Foundation has been built on technology and through social media. If it wasn't for social media, we would just be a little local group as opposed to global like we are. And and with our clients uh, or our you know the people that we re represent, they often have said if it wasn't for mobile technology, they couldn't do anything that they want to do. They do their banking in Africa. You know this. The banking is done. Women who are are, are selling things at the market, the, the payments go right into the into the phone and they and they stay safe. These women aren't carrying around cash or something like that. They're they're banking through the phone, they're selling through the phone. It's just helping people so much. So I'm I'm totally with you. And in fact, with the television show, not only is the interview going to be on Skype, but if they're ha if they have a mobile device that they're working with, they can turn that around and say, you know, here's here are the crops, here's what we've been working on, or here's the school we're building, you know, and use and use their mobile device that way and and just create so much more visual impact that people feel like, wow, I was just visiting uh, Nigeria and I could see what was going on, you know, with these developments there. So I, I I've never shied away from technology, and and I'm not young, so it's you know I've I've been trained when I've needed to know something, I just find someone who can tell me how to use it. I know you've probably done the same thing, and it's like, okay, I get it. All right, great. I'm glad it does that too. So. So yeah. you brought up something that was really important that I want to address. Safety. Yeah. People that are in third world countries. You know, people don't realize that when you, and I know I'm talking about third world countries. I grew up in South America and Central America. And if you're walking around with cash, you're a target for being either, you know, kidnapped, raped, or even, or I would say even in New York City, I mean, being, you know, just having someone pickpocket you, correct? Okay? And even in South America, Central America, especially when I grew up there, okay, I didn't come back to the United States until the late 70s. So um, having the ability to have to do a sale with, you know, the square, having your mobile device and using the square or the pay any of those little, you know, gadgets you put in your your your, your either whether it be your iPad or your, your phone, okay, the money's going directly into their banks. And so not having that cash is really protecting it, and not necessarily women. It could be a man or whatever. So right. you brought up a really key point there: that technology does keep people keep people safe, but not having to carry around cash. And more and more people that are also tourists, they don't want to carry around cash anymore because mm -hmm. they also are, don't want to get pickpocketed or you know whatever. So that is a really key thing about technology today by having the ability to do sales via technology and not having to have to carry on cash. So that right. was a really good point that you brought up. And the yeah. other thing you brought up that I really want to also put out there to people is social media. I actually just did a show early today where I was a guest and we were talking about so many businesses that are older do, don't, that are, I'm like, I don't need social media. You know, I never had social media before. I don't need social media now. My business is doing great. I make a ton of money. You know, basically, poo-poo social media. I don't need it. And, it, and, and I, as I was trying to explain, is we need to meet people where they're at. And mm -hmm. whether you didn't have social media then, and if you didn't have you know, fax machines and all these other things then, it is what it is now. And if we aren't willing to grow with the times, then, like you said, you, you, you needed to learn something, you learn it. Because we're willing to meet people where they're at, and we're willing to grow with technology, we're willing to grow with society. Social media is connection. 
And is that and that is how you actually do get more business. And let's and I and I made a very valid point. Even if it wasn't multimillionaire, already made my money, I don't need any more money, I don't need more clients. The way I look at it, let's say I've already made all that. I'm now in the position where I get to give back. I have clients now that I want them still to come to my blog and learn from me, regardless of I'm not even if they're not coming to me to pay me to become a client, I still want people to be able to find me and still learn from me. Right. That is my way of still being able to give back. If they can't find me because I have no social media presence, what is the point? Right. Well, that's everything you said I absolutely agree with. And I would just add that there is a way in which the whole globe is shrinking as a result of social media. We know things about what's going on around the world now. The whole world is watching, you know, whether that's, you know, abuse of women in India or something wonderful happening in Tanzania. There is there's a way in which the humanity, the global humanity being tied together through social media is like magic to me. That I have friends, I, I, I wake up in the morning and I've got lots of messages from places all over the world, you know, and I know you do too. It's like, isn't that great? that there is so much commonality in us, there's so much oneness that what I say in my blog or in something I share reaches the heart of somebody far, far away who I've never met, who looks different than I do, has speaks a, a different kind of a language, their, their native language, but they understand what I'm talking about. They can tell me what they're doing and it really touches me. I can share that then we all start knowing each other and that and that sense of one world one community becomes stronger and stronger and I I don't think we should shy away from it and and um, what I'm finding is that the people who seem to be just really relaxed and healthy about it are, are able to just move forward in their lives they're not locked up you know I have to tell you my mother my mother is going to be 100 years old on her next birthday she looks fantastic she's really active she just went to a party the other night wearing heels a really late birthday party late at night I'm like oh my gosh mom just hearing about it is exhausting me but one of the things that I have found about her that I think is keeping her younger is she doesn't run away from technology even at her age she may not use it herself so much but when I hang out with her she wants me to show her everything on Facebook, you know, what of her grandchildren posted, what, what, what's going on. She never says, oh, those newfangled things and pulls away. She leans in and she says, isn't that just amazing? I remember when phones were hung on the wall and you had to dial up like that. And so it's like there's something very relaxed about just going with that flow of what's happening in the world today and not not you know retracting from it so I Resistance. she's actually instead of resisting she's actually going with the flow and actually going in with the excitement with like curiosity like a kid oh that is so amazing that's so well yes. let me see that let me see this and yeah. she's going with the curiosity instead of going oh I don't want anything about that that's just you know so she's just going with it yeah and I think it's a beautiful thing is that's the more curious she is and that's probably why she's still living Exactly. She's a hunter, she's still living because she's still curious. She's still yeah. curious about life. Yeah. Instead of yeah. being, oh, I don't want to deal with life anymore. I just want to check out and I want to go away. Right. right, right. And so that's one of the things about the television show that I think is going to be so much fun is to be able to stand in a studio. I have a big Skype screen next to me. I'll be able to see what somebody's working on, what they're doing. We'll be able to talk just like you and I are here, like like friends, and they'll be able to really deliver the message of here I am, far away from you, but here's what I'm doing. And again, with the with the app, their own neighbors can watch them because it'll be on the on the on the mobile device. So so anyway, that's that's what Billions Rising is up to these days, and we're pretty we're pretty excited about it. We go uh, we shot a demo yesterday in the studio. Kind of you want to test out all the elements, you know, with with technology. It's always good to check things out first. So we did a little short 30-second demo, and um, we start shooting uh, later this month on the 24th. We have uh, two shows that we're going to film, and um, the the show itself goes live and starts airing in September. Where we have a regular television season from September through June, 
and um, it's uh, once a week and we're really excited to have something that is going to be ongoing in that way. Well, that's really exciting. The one thing I wanted to ask that is, this is a really key one too for people, is that you never know, what people fail to remember is that every message that we have, we never know who we're touching. It's right. like that message that you put on your wall or on the television show or on the radio, wherever you're putting that message, you never know who needed to hear it exactly in that moment. So n never fail to put yourself out there and share your message. It's so important to do that and put yourself out there. So since we're on a, on a video show, like this is also going to be a podcast, can you please share with everyone where they can find your website? Okay, well right now the best way to find us is billionsrising.org and starting in July, July 1st, we're going to have our new website, which is going to be billionsrising.tv. Both of them will be active, but the, billion, uh, the dot .tv is going to be just the television shows and uh, an archive uh, of all the shows we've done, the current show, and so we'll be able to uh, have people you know, go to that site and watch any of the past shows or whatever they want to see about the television show. So billionsrising.org. And starting in July, billionsrising.tv. And let's spell that out once just so that people have that as well. It is a, it's, um, it is, you see it under my name there, I think, probably too, but it's right, billion. But we're also turning this into a podcast. I want to also just spell it out for people. Yes, also I, okay, it's B I L L I O N S. And then that next word is rising, R I S I N G. So the billions has the plural, billionsrising.org, and then billionsrising.tv. And I want to thank you so much for joining me and taking time out of your busy schedule, because I know us producers have very crazy, busy, hectic <laughs> schedules. And um, yes, we wear many, many hats, and we're always running around and doing many, many things. And it's been such a joy to have you. And I look forward to talking to you again. So you and I always have so many things to talk oh, yeah. about. I know we do. To Heather. She's always doing wonderful things. I will. I and will. And thank to Warren. Because Warren is, Warren is always tweeting out there. Yeah. And um, just to hi, say hi to everyone for me. I will. And I look forward to seeing many wonderful things coming out of the TV show. I will be watching and following. And um, I look forward to being of service in any way I can. Thank you so much. I'll be in touch about a guest list, okay? That sounds yes. great. That sounded um, really nice. And as my audience knows, I always put together a wonderful blog post, which will have the embedded video as well as the embedded podcast with links and everything so they can find out everything they need to know about Billions Rising. Okay. So um, that will all come out, and I will be sending you everything that you need to know so that you have all the links and graphics that you need. So okay. Thank you, everybody. So and thanks for everything you do. You're a very, very busy woman, and you're always in service to the world, and I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I will be with you again next week to bring you wonderful content and valuable tools so that you can enjoy and be self-reliant for yourself. So go out there and share your life, share your wisdom with everyone, and blessings to everyone, and have a beautiful, wonderful evening. Enjoy, and see you next week.